Okay, so welcome to the first data structure that we're going to cover in this series, which is a stack. Um, so you should have experience with stacks from AS level, uh, where you had to deal with um, kind of a conceptual diagram of a stack. Uh, so hopefully the diagram that I've got here on the left uh, looks kind of familiar to you, it's something you've, you've sort of seen before. Um, so, uh, but however, coding a stack uh, is, is quite possibly new to you. That's probably not something you covered at AS level. So I'm going to start off by reviewing the basic principles behind a stack, uh, talking about the operations that we have, and then I'm going to jump into coding them. Um, stack is definitely the simplest ADT that you have to learn in A level. Um, simplest to understand and also the simplest to code, I think. So um, because it's quite easy, I'm hoping this video will stay uh, relatively short compared to the other ones. I, I'm sure the linked list and binary tree videos will probably go over 45 minutes. Uh, this one I'm aiming for uh, 50. Okay, so you can tell me if I broke my promise or not. Okay, so let's dive in and let's take a look at the stack we have here. Um, so as you can see, I've already added some elements. Um, now these letters don't mean anything. There's no order. Um, it's just some kind of identifier. Um, so Let's look at a few things here. So this is basically an array. So uh, as far as Cambridge A-level is concerned, um, a stack is implemented using an array. Um, there's also a relationship between stacks and linked lists, but I'm not going to get into that right now. We've got an array that's basically uh, driving the stack. All a stack is is an array and one variable called the top pointer. And then we just code a couple of methods couple of functions, couple of procedures, depending on your implementation, that gives the stack its unique behavior. So what is a stack's unique behavior? Let's just, re let's just remind ourselves how it works. So basically, a stack only has two operations, okay? And I'm actually going to start coding these. Um, they're called push, okay, push, which means to add something onto the stack. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to pass right now. So, okay, so push will add something onto the stack. And now the way that a stack works is, we always got to add things onto the top, okay? So if I want to add the letter uh, V to this stack, this is what I have to do. Basically, I have to grab the top pointer, move it up one spot, and then this is where I insert my, my element, okay? Uh, and that's basically how we add things to the stack. So that operation, again, is called push, okay? Um, the other operation we have to uh, know is pop. So pop is how we remove things from a stack. Okay, um, pop is very simple. Only the element that the top pointer is pointing to can be deleted. So if I do pop, that means I can only remove the V. So what will happen is uh, basically all I've got to do is move the top pointer down. Now in some implementations, and certainly in like a conceptual graphical implementation like we have here, They'll delete that V, but you don't actually have to delete the V. The V can just stay there in the array, but just by moving this pointer, we have kicked it out of the stack. There's no way we can get this V back. And if I push something, for example, if I want to uh, push W at this point, I'm going to move the top pointer here, and I'm going to overwrite whatever was there before. So V is now gone. So the whole thing about like uh, putting an empty string or whatever in in the in the spot is not strictly necessary, but uh, you'll you know you can do that for clarity if you like. Okay, so that's push and pop. So uh, essentially, we can summarize the behavior of a stack uh, through this uh, expression. We can, we call it LIFO, which means last in, first out. So the most recently added element. So in this case, a W will be the first to be deleted, okay? Essentially, F was the first thing that I put in, B was the second, R was the third, P was the fourth, H was the fifth, W was the sixth. But if then we talk about removing, the order kind of gets flipped. So W will be the first to be removed, then H, then P, then R, then B, then F. Okay, that's what is meant by LIFO last in first up. Okay, so that is pretty much, uh, that's pretty much stack right there. Um, we just have to cover a couple of exceptional cases. So the first exceptional case to cover with push is if the stack is full. Okay, so let's uh, simulate that. Let me just add in a couple elements, pretend that we've pushed these. Change my color back so I'm consistent. 
Uh, let's do a different letter, let's do E, okay. Uh, let me delete this label, and then my top pointer is up here, okay. So this is the stack full condition. So if I try to do something like uh, push, uh, push S, I don't have any space. So I have to basically, before I actually push something onto the stack or try to push something onto the stack, I have to check that if I increase the top pointer, will I be pointing at something outside of my array? Okay, and if I am, I can't do it. I cannot do the operation. So let's code that one first, okay? So um, basically you can do if top pointer plus one would be greater than equal to size, then you can basically just print an error. Print error stack is full. If I can spell it. Cool. So that's our exceptional case that we're gonna have to deal with. Um, now let's slow down a little bit and we need to actually set up the stack first. So what do we need? We need a constant to define our size. So here I've got uh, eight. Oh my goodness, I cannot type. Okay, so I've got eight things in my stack, right? Zero to seven. And I need a top pointer. So when we first create the stack, let's actually empty it so we can think about it. Let me just delete all of the data, pop all of the data. Okay. So with an empty stack, my top pointer is gonna be like here actually, pointing to minus one, because there is no top of the stack. There's nothing in the stack. So uh, we're gonna set our top pointer to minus one to start with. Uh, and then now we've just got to build our array. So um, the way that you will do this in Python is you can do something like stack equals, now stack is just going to be an array, but we're just going to call it stack. Okay, so it's going to be a list, and we're going to just in, uh, initialize it as an array of empty strings. So we do empty string for i in range size, and that will basically spit out a list of empty strings. Uh, let's just test that. So let's run. Okay, and then if I look at my stack, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight empty uh, strings. Okay, great. So um, we started coding our push. So we've checked for the exceptional case, right? If the, if the stack is full. So if the stack is not full, what is our else condition? Uh, how do we actually add to the stack? So let's think about it. Let's go back to the operation we suggested where we've got push S. Okay. What do we do? So we've already checked that the stack is not full. So let's assume that we can successfully add this. So what we have to do is bring up the top pointer one position and add S into whatever we're pointing at. Okay, uh, and that's it really. Okay, so uh, first thing we do is we do top pointer equals top pointer plus one. And then we do element of stack at top pointer equals, and we're going to set this equal to whatever the new data is that we're trying to add. All right, uh, and let's just print in a little message. Uh, let's do something like added uh, new data to top of stack, something like that. Okay, um, I want to emphasize the importance of like nice, clear error messages. So let's also say, uh, couldn't add, let's say stack is full. Couldn't add new data. Okay, uh, just so we're very clear. So that's push, that looks pretty good to me. Let's uh, try it. Okay, uh, so let's push a few things. So push A, okay, I have an error. Um, okay, my problem here is uh, the top pointer is a global variable. Remember, if you're trying to change a variable uh, that is declared in the main body of the program, if you're, if, you're change, if you're trying to change that inside a subroutine, you have to declare it inside the subroutine as global. Okay, so global top pointer. Otherwise, it thinks I'm referring to a new variable that I've created inside the function. Okay, let's try again. Hopefully no errors this time. Okay, so let's push A. Good, added A to top of stack. Uh, let's do a bunch of these, push A, push B. Okay, 
Okay, uh, let's check out the stack. So you can see these are being added in the in the order that I'm adding. Uh, let's keep going. Gonna run out of space soon, which is what I'm trying to test. Okay, and that is the stack. Oh, almost full, we've got room for one more. Okay. So you see we're full now. So if I try to add I, I should get, yeah, stack is full, couldn't add I. Uh, so if I look at stack, you can see it doesn't add. Uh, let's check our value of top pointer. Okay, you can see top pointer is seven, uh, as you would expect, right? So if I'm adding, you know, A and then, and then B, and then C, and then D, and then E, and then F, and then G, and then H, you would expect my top pointer to be all the way up here, pointing at seven. So that makes sense, right? Okay, so that's push. Uh, what about pop? So with pop, we don't pass an argument because we can only delete the thing at the top of the stack. Okay, it's the only thing we can do. So uh, we're gonna have to do the same thing again where we declare uh, top pointer as a global. Um, and then we're just gonna do, do we have any exceptional cases? Can you think of any situation where we can't just behave normally? Um, what if we try to pop something from an empty stack? So I think that's something we have to we have to check. We can't let the user pop and then decrease the the top pointer if the stack is empty. So let's check if top pointer. How can we check if it's empty? What will it look like if the stack is empty? So this would be one thing in the stack. So we down here, right? So we can do if top pointer. Let's do top pointer less than zero. That means it's empty. Uh, so we can do an error. Unable to add. Oh, sorry. Unable to unable to pop. Stack is empty. Okay, there's no need for an F string here. Okay, so that's our exceptional case dealt with. So what's our normal case? So our normal case will simply be uh, we've got to print um, uh, the element first of all. So you may also implement this as a function where the element gets returned but I'm just gonna keep it simple and procedural with print statements. Uh, so let's see, um, let's say like removed element of stack at top pointer from stack. Okay, uh, last thing we've gotta do is we've gotta decrease that top pointer, right? If I'm deleting, if I'm popping B, I've got to bring a top pointer, top pointer back down. So let's do top pointer equals top pointer minus one. Okay, awesome. I think that's that working. Okay, so let's play with this a little bit. We should have both push and pop functional. So let's test our exception case first with an empty stack. Unable to pop stack is empty, great. So if I push A onto the stack and then I pop, I should see A removed. And then if I try and pop again, Unable to pop stack is empty. But something interesting here, if you look at the stack, you can see A is actually still in the array because I didn't overwrite the value with an empty string. You don't have to do that, okay? There's no need to overwrite the value with an empty string. Uh, however, you might find it clearer if you do. It's kind of your choice. Um, so let's do some push. So if I do, if I push A, let's not do that again. Uh, let's do X and then let's do Y and then let's do Z. Okay, so if I pop now, I should expect to see Z, Y, then X in that order, right? Z, Y, X. Pop again, unable to pop, stack is empty. Great. So um, that is actually uh, everything that you need for, uh, for an exam. Uh, I am gonna show you one more function, uh, one more procedure that is uh, not required, you won't have to write this in an exam. However, uh, I think it kind of ties this example together very nicely. Basically what I want is to kind of print a diagram like this with like an arrow pointer showing the elements of the stack in order and which one is the top. Okay, pretty easy. Um, you don't have to memorize this one. Uh, let's just uh, try it out before we finish. So let's call it show details. Actually, I'm gonna call it show stack. Okay, no arguments. 
So um, I don't think I don't need to modify anything. So there's no need for globals here. Basically, we're just doing a for loop. So for i in range, and this is going to this is always going to print all eight elements of the stack, even if they're empty. But I want to start from the top. So I'm going to do size minus one to minus one with an increment of minus one. Uh, if i equals top pointer, what I want to do in that case is I want to kind of print it like so. Stack i. Oh, forgot the curly braces. And I'm going to add in this little very crude arrow here, saying it's the top element. Okay. If not, I just want to print stack i. Okay. So what this is going to then do is give me a nice diagram. Let's test this one final time. Okay, so if I push A and then do show stack, you should see something like this. Okay, pretty nice. Um, we could kind of, let, let's add a few more. Push B, push C, and then if I do show stack, that looks pretty good, right? So you can see the A's at the bottom, B's next, then C, and we've got the top pointer uh, at C. If I then pop and show stack, you can see that C is still kind of in the array, but because we've moved that top pointer down, C is no longer in our stack. Uh, and if I add D, you can see that C gets uh, overwritten at that point. Okay, uh, so that is everything uh, that you have to know about a stack. So again, just like, just like uh, every other algorithm or data structure in this series, um, this is simply one implementation of a stack. You might see slight tweaks, slight differences in exam papers. Um, so simply memorizing code is not going to help you here, uh, not, not going to help you too much. Uh, you need to really understand these concepts and be able to uh, code it from scratch. Okay, that's everything. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you in the next one.